Let me know when we're ready to go. Go ahead. We good to go? Yes. All right. So uh, welcome, everyone, to another week of One Million Cups. Fairfax chapter. Uh, we're so glad that you can join us this morning. Um, for those who are new to the meeting today, uh, One Million Cups is sponsored by Coffin Foundation. And we meet every Wednesday morning to solve business challenges uh, while being caffeinated by the beverages of our choice. Uh, my name is John Yu, and I'm one of the org organizers here at One Million Cups, and I'll be emceeing the meeting today. Uh, so if you haven't done already, please feel free to introduce yourself uh, to the chat box on the right-hand column of your screen. Uh, next slide. So um, One Million Cups is sponsored by uh, and supported by Kaufman Foundation. Uh, as you know, Kaufman Foundation works with communities all across the uh, U.S. to help entrepreneurs uh, to educate uh, and connect uh, with one another and really to learn from uh, each other. And that's how we sort of challenge ourselves uh, while we are pursuing uh, our business. And you may be asking why we're called the One Million Cups. Um, so there are over 160 chapters, just like ours, all across the country. Uh, we meet every uh, Wednesday morning, same time, uh, I suppose, 9 a.m. In, in their respect, respective time. And uh, uh, we consume uh, over 1 million cups of caffeinated drink. Uh, so hence, uh, we're called the 1 million cups. So if you're not already caffeinated, um, please grab a cup of coffee and uh, uh, let's, uh, let's get right into it. Next slide. So we have an app. Um, so if you are able to download the app, please take a moment to do that and uh, uh, log in. This will help us to know that you're here and uh, let the Kaufman Foundation know that we are a, a growing uh, community. Uh, or if you're unable to do that, you, know, you can also go to onemillioncups.com uh, Fairfax chapter and you can check in there as well. All right, next slide. So um, what's great about uh, our group is that uh, it is all um, uh, volunteer driven. Uh, we have amazing uh, group of volunteers and organizers um, and brand ambassadors. Um, these are the folks that who work behind the scenes to recruit new presenters and uh, make the every uh, meeting uh, possible. Uh, but at this time, uh, I would like to take a moment and to have people introduce themselves. I know like a Zoom meeting like this, it's really hard to get to know one another uh, in a virtual uh, setting like this. Um, so what we'll do uh, is that um, I will call on you. Uh, I'm going to sort of look at the, um, the right-hand column, the list of people. Um, and when I call on you, uh, please take about a minute. Uh, we have about 21 people, so it will take, uh, hopefully it doesn't take 21 minutes, uh, but- Can we you know, do 30 seconds, John? Yes, yes, so 30 please. seconds, perfect. Yeah, so 30 seconds to introduce your name. Uh, so your name and uh, what you do or who do you work for? Um, uh, and uh, how do you hear about us? So with that, let me look at the column here. So one minute comes organizer, so that's Jen. So Jen, why don't you pick us up? Jen Dalton, I'm a one minute cups organizer for five plus years, thrilled to be here. I'm a personal brand strategist. My company is Brand Mirror. If you're trying to grow your business by having a intentional reputation, I'm a great person to talk with. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Jen. Leslie? Hi, my name is Leslie Arkillian. I'm the owner and photographer of Rooted in Beauty Photography. I am a mother-focused um, branding photographer. I want to bring moms in front of the camera so they have that legacy and the special moments captured for themselves as well. Um, I am also an organizer with uh, One Million Cups for a little over six months now, I think. Uh, need to go back and do the math, but uh, welcome. <laughs> John Rutenberg. Good morning, John Rutenberg, cccsolutions.com. I also am an organizer. Uh, my company helps our clients close more sales with less follow-up fatigue. Thank you for being here. Melinda. 
Good morning, everyone. I'm Melinda Sigal. I'm also an organizer. My business, the Sales and Marketing Connection, helps companies with putting their selling materials and their stories together so that they can get in front of their customers on a regular basis and be there when their customers are in a buying mode. Thank you. Brazil? Yes, my name is Basil Limba. I'm with the Networking Institute. We help people network as easily as they drive their car so they can get clients more easily. Thank you. Great. John Foster. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm not on camera. I'm driving, but I'm uh, an ambassador for Green Fair Organic Cafe as well as Green Fair Health and Wellness. And uh, I've been with, uh, oh, I've been with One Million Cups. I can't keep track. At least three years. And uh, really glad to be here. It is always a uh, great way to kick off the middle of the week. All right, Devante. Good morning, everyone. My name is Devante Ogden with Ogden and Associates. And if you have any administrative duties that are taking your time away from profit making and production oriented activities, I can help you get those done. I've been with One Million Cups. This is probably my third meeting, but it's been a delight being here. Thank you, everyone. Come. John Norris. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is John Norris. I'm the founder and president of Medicare Portal. Uh, we're based here in Tyson's Corner. Uh, what we do is help seniors transition to Medicare. So whether they're turning 65 or they work past 65, we assist them in that process. There's no cost for our services. We're compensated by insurance companies. And we work actually in 35 states and multiple languages. Thank you. Jun Hyuk. Oh, yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Jun Hyuk Yoon. I just go by Jun. Uh, I'm with Ken Lim. And like he said, uh, we are from Finit, the Korean company, the startup company. And we're here to uh, introduce our company and the solution. Mm -hmm. And we will be traveling to the United States quite often this year. So thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, Jun. Justin? Good morning, everybody. I'm Justin Holtz. The name of my company is District Financial Advisors, and we help people make smart financial decisions. We help them save and invest more money. We help them accumulate more assets through making better investments and uncovering those pesky blind spots in your financial plan, avoiding that valley of despair, as John Rutenberg talked about last week. So it's always fun to be here, guys. Looking forward to the meeting. Great. Okay. We'll go to Ken Lim. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. And I am the CSO, the Chief Strategy Officer at Finet, uh, Korea. Uh, we uh, Finet is the um, AI-based uh, based technology firm which provides stock trading information to stock investors in Korea. And we are now penetrating into the U.S. market. And yeah, uh, good to meet you, every everyone. Right, thanks. And we'll go to Ken Portnoy. Good morning. Uh, I'm Ken Portnoy, the Profit Planner. I provide fractional CFO services to small business owners and their families. Um, what I do primarily as a starting point with people I work with is make their business profitable, get them to the point where profit is a priority, that they're taking profit from their business and their business is providing them the rewards that they deserve for their hard work, dedication, and risk-taking. All right, uh, next is McKinley. Good morning, forgive me not um, having my camera on. Uh, protecting and empowering people through legal and privacy management services. And what I do is uh, speak with people and just try to get 15 minutes of their time that may or may not be interested, but they can always tell a friend. My name is McKinley Tucker. My company is Risk and IDT Solutions. I'm working under DBA Risk and PII Solutions. And I'd just like to share some information with you. Like I say, you may or may not be interested. Looking forward to meeting all and speaking with you. Thank you. All right, thank you. And next we go to Reggie Holmes. Good morning, everybody. Reggie Holmes, my company is <laughs> Created. Uh, we provide brand strategy and design services for businesses and organizations. I like to say that we help position, polish, and promote your small business brand. It's great to be here. All right, next, Scott. 
Good morning, everyone. I'm Scott Alford with Oracle <laughs> Capital LLC. It's good to see everyone this morning and looking forward to a great meeting today. All right, um, next is Stephanie. She is in transit, so she put oh, her okay. short bio into the chat. Okay, gotcha. So everyone, please take her uh, chance to read her bio, do that. Uh, and next is Thomas, Tom. Mr. Scheib. Thank you, thank you. My name is Tom Scheib. I'm a Long & Foster real estate agent, associate broker, and I help people buy and sell homes at all stages in their life. I'm also of Superior Options for Seniors, which is a group of 10 of us that provide services for the senior community, helping them either stay in their home or move to a new community like an assisted living or a continuing care community. Tom Scheib, Long & Foster. All right. Now, is there anyone that I didn't get to? Hope I did. Tess. Right. Oh, Tess. Yeah. Hey, Tess. Good Please. morning, everybody. My name is Tess Rollins. I am also a One Million Cups organizer. Um, I am the chief creative cultivator for my company, Simply Enhanced, which is a graphic design and brand strategy firm. Um, our focus is basically to make sure that small businesses um, are visible so they can remain viable. And then I am also pulling do double duty, working with those small business as the executive director of All Town Fairfax Business Association. All right, welcome, Tess. I think we covered a win. Yourself. So, uh, I'll, I'll do that when we when I get to the sponsor slide. But yeah, so yeah, that wasn't too bad. We kind of did that for less than a, less than 10 minutes. So great, uh, great everyone for joining us and especially for those who are new this morning. Next slide. Yeah, so um, our mission is to uh, create a consistent and educated educational experience for the presenter. I will be presenting this latter part of our uh, second part of our meeting today, as well as all of you who are attending. Um, and, uh, and like I said before, what's unique about us is that each week we highlight a one business owner, uh, one uh, business, and um, and uh, focus on the challenges that they're they're facing. And so we come together as a community and collective minds to help uh, solve those business challenges that we're facing. All right, next slide. So our pillars: we focus on presentation, uh, not a pitch pitch for investments or for sale. Uh, we focus on authentic connections, and uh, most of all, uh, most importantly, we are run by the volunteers in the community and for the community, which means that we, we need uh, all of your support. Next slide. So at this time, I'd like to recognize our sponsors. Um, so our space sponsor, well, we uh, used to meet in, in person. Uh, is Office Evolution. Um, I'm John Yu. I'm, I'm with Office Evolution. We're our co-working and virtual office uh, space provider located right here in Tyson's Corner. Uh, we provide a um, number of private offices as well as virtual office options for small businesses. So if you're looking for um, a space uh, in, a, in a flexible, in a short-term or even long-term basis, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. And our coffee sponsor for month of February uh, is uh, Basil Lambda, uh, Lamba from Networking Institute, who's actually going to be our presenter today. So Basil, would you like to say a brief word about your company? Yeah, I put my logo there. Uh, be aware, it's, a, it's in an early stage right now, but that tells you an idea where we're going. Yeah, we are the Networking Institute. We help people uh, uh, with the basic fundamental of networking so they can uh, get more business. And, uh, it's as simple as that. Thank you. All right. Thank you for being a coffee sponsor for month of February. So if anyone would like to be a coffee sponsor, um, please reach out to me. Uh, doesn't require actually, because we're meeting uh, virtually, you, you don't even need to provide us a coffee. Uh, you simply let us know or let me know how you'd like to sponsor a particular month, then we'll put you down and we can spotlight you uh, every week or for the months that, that you're sponsoring coffee for. Next slide. Okay, so I think you all know uh, how you're very familiar with the virtual meeting. Um, so before we uh, 
bring our new uh, bring our presenter. Uh, please keep your microphone on mute during the presentation. And after the presentation, you'll have opportunity to not only provide feedback or ask questions. And our moderator to help us facilitate that um, that segment of our uh, our meeting is going to be Melinda. Um, and so, with that, uh, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, so our presenter this morning is no stranger to us, Basil Lamba, who's going to be talking about uh, his new startup. Brazil, please take it away. Yeah, thank you. As I say, our name is Networking Institute. In fact, uh, I um, I was surprised because I went to a meeting and I started talking about what I'm doing. And somebody said, why don't you call it the Networking Institute? I am saying, yeah, that's a good idea. But I didn't believe that the name was available. <laughs> so I went and looked it up and, whoa, well, well, and then the name was available. So I took it and said, that's how we call ourselves. Next slide, please. Uh, the challenge we are up against is reaching, is how do we reach mortgage bankers who are eager to improve their networking skills as their livelihood depends on it? One of the fundamentals that we've been in networking arena for a good 20 years right now, and about a decade ago, is some, they had this realization. I won't get into the details, and, but this was the realization. We drive, in fact, we did a survey because I host a monthly breakfast event, as most of you know, and then an, an incident came up and I couldn't understand. Somebody was not just handled properly. So I, all, I was assuming that everybody mastered networking. And then I did a survey and then asked people if they drive, they say, yes. How do you learn? Well, I went to driving school. Do you network? Yes, absolutely. How do you learn? Uh, 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 number one, I just walked into the room. Number two, somebody pushed me into the room. That's where I came to realize that we never, most of us really got the opportunity to learn how to network. Next slide. In 2008, when that became clear, then we started offering some networking coaching. And in 2020, you all know what's happened. So we switched because literally from one sentence from the governor, we were out of business <laughs> because we were doing event in person. So we pivot and went online. We carry on offering our services online. And in 2022, 23, I realized that corporate, particularly mortgage, was the people coming the most to our training. And that's where I went then into corporate. And now we offer the service because they are claiming for it. What we bring to the table is the ability to easily contact and effectively network with anyone, anywhere. I added to increase revenue because the people we are dealing with are business people. It's not just being able to network in a social fashion. We could do that, but that's not the goal because each and every business, as they say, until something is sold, nothing is about to happen. So we build the whole program, though it has a stress on networking, but it is built so people can get client, paid client, the ideal client, more easily. Next slide. How do we go about it? We offer seminars, classes, coaching programs, and keynotes. Of course, we started in person, and in 2020, we moved into the virtual arena. Who are ideal clients? As I mentioned earlier, loan officers. And I, I invested, I was looking into it to find why they're coming, they're flocking. And I realized it's because they are on 100% commission. So practically anybody who's on 100% commission tend to be attracted to what we do. It's not that nobody else can use it, they use, they do, but they have their back against the wall. As I like to put it in a, cre in a crude way, they eat what they kill. 
Now, you don't see realtors there because the only, for a very simple reason, a lot of realtors are part-time. They do this, they do that. They may not have that pressure, but the loan officers do. So I realize that's what they come to us and naturally we're more than happy to serve them. And as a result, mortgage association are where we go the most. So we can then be in contact with those people. We use networking event and any other tool and even social media. But <laughs> the interesting part is I want to use networking because I am about networking as a tool to do business. Next slide. What do we offer? We broke down the whole system in five basic skills. And we teach those from the very first contact to the closing. The reason for that is we want the person to be able to do them within their personality all the way up to the end. I'm pretty sure all of you have run to a dealership or any business person. We have a great conversation. But as you move through, or when it comes to the close, the person acts differently or is not sure or is shy. So we took the whole thing and we get the person through it. So they move through it with their personality and it flows from the beginning to the end. The value of what we bring to the table and one of the things we stress, I mean stress dramatically, is to get people to define exactly and precisely the ideal client. It is mind boggling the amount of time we can spend on talking to people who are not our client and in affect our business dramatically. It is mathematical, as I said two weeks ago. If out of 10 people, only one is ideal client, you are going to wind up with 10% of the revenues. If out of 10 people, nine of them are your ideal clients, you're going to wind up with 90% of the revenues. It is a major thing we stress heavily. And with that, the conversion rate increased dramatically. What differentiated our program? I don't think that we, I don't know, as I mentioned, I say I was surprised when I found the name Networking Institute because I thought it was covered. In fact, I mentioned an earlier incident to you. When that incident came, I started at a breakfast event, putting out a program on education on networking. And what I found out at the end, people were coming to me asking me, you need to write a book on networking. You need to make a course on networking. Oh, excuse me. Because any, when I went to a bookstore or a library, I saw books wall to wall on networking. I couldn't understand for the life of myself why they wanted another book. And then I realized none of those persons even came to me and said, you need to write a book on how to drive a car. Why? They know how to drive a car. They don't need me. At which point time I realized, oh my God, maybe we have something over here. And as years went by, it was crystal clear that nobody, there was no material there where somebody can find very precise, practical, workable methods somebody can use in networking so as to en en enhance the culture of their salesman or even an individual professionals. So I would say that's the differentiator is really one, two, three. How do we drive a car? Ignition key number one, gear shifting number two, and pedal to the middle number three. We broke out the system to get a client where you do one, two, three. We took the one, two, three and broke it in five basic skills. And that's what we offer to people today. Just a quick time check, Basile. We have about a minute left. I'm pretty sure we're almost done. Am I correct? Next slide. There you go. Not too bad. <laughs> My question is how to reach the mortgage bankers Great who time. are eager to improve networking skills and their livelihood as their livelihood depend on it. Thank you very much. All right, Melinda, please um, feel free to facilitate the conversation. Great. We'll get um, this um, slide. Can we keep that slide up? And then Melinda, go ahead. 
Yeah, keep the other slide up. That's fine with this. Um, welcome all again. And the next part is the conversation and recommendations for Brazil. What you will do is use the emoji um, key to react and let me know if you've got some questions. Uh, you can also put them into the chat. Please only ask one question at a time and try to be courteous so other people get a turn. Don't keep going on and on and on because occasionally a couple of us have just kept asking question after question and there are a lot of people that are waiting. I will watch the um, screen to see if anybody is raising their hand as well as um, the emoji keys. And with that, does anybody have their hand up yet? Brazil, that was an outstanding presentation. Thank Maybe you. very quickly, just tell us what's your one, two, three, four, five, because you didn't share that with us yet. <laughs> That's confidential. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, the one, two, three to get business is one, networking, two, promotion, and three, sales in that order. Exactly mm -hmm. and precisely, just like a driver car, ignition key, gear shifting, pedal to the middle. It never changed. That's the one, two, three, in the summary. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I guess I will make one comment or ask a question. And have you tried to get in front of groups? Have you tried to do lunch and learns? Have you tried to do breakfast and learns and other types of things like that so that you can get in front of mortgage bankers? Oh, yes, we're doing that right now. I remember, I think, in fact, I... I have a launch on coming up on November the 9th. And also there is a VA, Northern Virginia Association, as well as the Maryland. And I attend the event regularly and we're working on it. We are in the process right now. Next, we have Ken and then John Rutenberg. Hello again, Bazil. Hello. Bazil and I go back a, a, a while in his businesses and I've participated in his marvelous networking events. Bazil is the master. Um, but I, I find that your, uh, your focus on mortgage uh, bankers is interesting because my understanding, and maybe Tom Scheip can, can comment on this, mortgage bankers get their leads from realtors mm -hmm. and that realtors feed mortgage bankers. And mm -hmm. so I was curious as to what your thinking was about how to leverage the community of realtors um, or to bring together the communities of realtors and mortgage bankers uh, in ways that will be beneficial for, for both sides of that mm -hmm. and that can drive your business um, at the same time. Um, so have, I'm just curious how you think, how you feel about that, what you think about that. Well, I feel about it this way. The definition of an ideal client is one, the guy who can pay you. Two, he wants your service. Three, he's follow your orders so that you can achieve the transformations. I was a member of the NVR, the Virginia Real Estate Association, but I did not get much. I just got one client who happened to be just a top producer. And that was because I squeezed, I was getting myself invited to a top producer's event. So per the numbers, realtors were not it. And in mortgage people, they are ready to pay. They want the service. And that's how I came to focusing on mortgage. Next, we have John, and then we have Reggie. Mm -hmm. Jen, is your hand up? I can't tell. Okay. So, Basil, thank you so much. Really appreciate you stepping in and presenting. And I had the good fortune along with Scott to chat yesterday with you in preparation a little bit. And so as I've thought since then, mm -hmm. um, it goes back sort of to sales 101. So who the heck is the decision maker? It might be the owner of that 20 person lending officer mortgage banking company. And so you have a question, and I don't know the answer, bottom up or top down. But do you find 10 mortgage bankers from the same company who finally prevails on the owner? 
or do you go to the owner? I'm thinking it's going to the owner. What are your thoughts? Yes, it's going to the owner. I don't know, um, to the owner. Um, my experience is also, again, is that you have to build that relationship. So that's what I'm going to their association because they don't know me. They never hear about networking institute. It's kind of, I got to build that familiarity. So I'm taking the time to build that. But definitely I'm interested into either the owner or the head of the training department because they make the decision as to what happened. So that's one market, which is a corporate. But the other are also individual loan officers who sign up for the classes. So these are the two. I say mortgage, but I have the, the, the corporate, which I'm interested in because from there I have 20 clients or they pay more or the individual who comes to me to learn the skills. But first and foremost, I realized I have to network with them, I have to build that rapport because it's new for them as much as most people for that matter. Next we have Reggie and then John North. Hi, Basil. Uh, Hi. Great presentation. Thank you Thank for you. sharing with us. Uh, my only question was, uh, if there's a part of your um, offering that takes into account uh, digital networking, um, mm -hmm. I know it's just probably primarily um, based around, you know, face-to-face -face, in-person networking. Um, I just wanted to, to ask if there is a part of it that, that is um, geared toward a lot of the networking that is done you know, online and in digital settings. And then, you know, if not, then that's definitely something to consider uh, as a lot of people, even mortgage you know, lenders spend a lot of time mm -hmm. uh, on the, in the digital space as well. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent point, Reggie. Very, very good point. What I found is it came down to the fundamentals of it. I, sometimes we think, oh, networking online, networking in person. Yes, there are different mediums but the fundamentals of them never change. I've been doing this for 20 years. They never change. They will never change. Before the online, you have people in New York doing business with people in California over the phone, never met themselves, but transacted on millions and millions of dollars. I know some of them. We tend to think the online change, but it didn't because the fundamentals are the same. And I was on an event, networking event, and I was there applying my materials. There was one, and then I met a lady afterward. And then she had told me, I kept looking at you. I kept saying to myself, who is that guy? Who is that guy? I need to talk to that guy. That woman was the executive producer of Larry King's. And then she invited me later on her show to talk about networking. But the principal well, I give you one of them, is being interested as a fundamental. So when I'm sitting here in front of my screen, I am interested on in the person who's speaking. If I'm in front of you in person, I do the exact same thing. I'm interested in you. These are the fundamentals of networking. So I apply them in person, on person, in, uh, on the screen, over the phone, anywhere and anywhere. Much like when you learn how to drive. You get to an airport, you want to rent a car. You say, well, I want a Lexus. They say, oh, sorry, uh, Reggie, we don't have a Lexus. You say, well, I want a Toyota. They say, sorry, Reggie, we don't have a Toyota. You start getting upset. You say, what do you have? They say, I have, to, I have a four. Good, they give you the keys, off to go. Once you have the fundamental, it doesn't matter who you're talking to. It doesn't matter if you have them on the phone. It doesn't matter if you have them on Zoom. They apply and they get you the result. It comes down to knowing those fundamentals. Does that answer your question? It, it does. I just, you know, in your offering, like, make sure that that comes across because okay. I, most people think, you know, traditional. Um, and, and you you want to you want to speak to that in your messaging too. You're correct. Yeah, you need to stress that more. Uh, I agree totally and completely. Thank you for that. John Norris, you're next. Hey, Basil. Um, hey. I, you know, uh, I'm just, I want to help you. I'm just trying to understand the most important thing is how do you generate revenue? Maybe I missed it, but how, what is your revenue model? Like you have this idea that networking, how do you get paid? How do you create income? We offer seminars, classes, coaching. To be, have a basic fundamental course, it's called Networking for Profit. 
it has five modules, the five special skills that I mentioned. That one is $997, okay? We have a six months program coaching where we build some more on that. And that one is $6,000. And we have a one-year program that is very, very comprehensive, have conferences, we offer three conferences a year, coaching, networking event in person and what have you. That is $14,999. And we're running pro people through those programs and they are very, getting a tremendous amount of success. Just and of course, when we have, uh, let's say, a company, and then we take 81 of those, and we multiply it by the number of people attending, and we give them a discount. Sure. Just, just trying to understand how you monetize. If you're looking for, obviously, individual uh, or, obviously, a, a, a company or a firm or an office would be your best bang for your buck. That's all I was trying to understand. I'll, I'll yeah. think more. That, that helps me understand it, though. Thank you. Yeah, but, but because also it may have in a company, maybe the corporate as a whole does not go for it. But the individual loan officer is interested, or anybody else for that matter. I say loan officer, we have people in different fields coming to our class, accountant and anybody else. It just, as I say, the concentration is the guy who say, you know what, I need this or I'm dead in the water. They are the one who seems to, to come the most to us. Thank you, John. So just very quickly, I heard you say something that's really unique. I have not seen any books out there that say digital networking or online networking. Mm -hmm. And it looks like that's a skill you're also trying to teach. With that, I want to say next is Justin and then is, is Jen. I just so, Zinal, thank you that. for sharing a uh, great presentation. I just had a few quick thoughts or questions for you. Sure. Um, have you thought about property and casualty insurance agents as a way to reach mortgage bankers? They're also closely connected. Mm -hmm. uh, they organize very well together as one touch point. Yeah. Yes, that's a good point. Okay. And then the second thing is just a, a lot of loan officers I know organize in teams. Mm -hmm. And there's usually a manager. And if you can get into an office, you know, contact some of the big ones around here, like Movement or Gold Star. Uh, if you can get in touch with a decision maker, then maybe you can get in front of, you know, a room full of these these people that might be good clients. Have you thought about that? Is, yes, uh, in the sense that when I, I go to those mortgage association events, I, I talk to them, I try to find out who's the key guy, who's the top guy. Sometimes it's written on the card or not, but these are the people that I pursue the most. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say systematically, but it's the back of my mind because I would like to get the head person and reach uh, as many as possible. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Jen. <laughs> so, Basil, thank you for presenting today. Um, thank and you. agree with everybody's thoughts that you're the, the networking guru. Um, I guess the, the question I would have is what's the opportunity cost or what are the other options when we think of competitors? How do you differentiate yourself? Who else is out there teaching networking? And yes. what do you feel like is the real differentiator? There are, uh, there are a lot of mortgage officers or anybody else for that matter who go to different programs to get learn how to get clients. Uh, what I found is that they teach them loosely, I would say, networking is much more marketing or lead generations mm -hmm. or, or sales. Uh, the reason I say that, because every single time I sit in front of somebody, they, I, get, I hear this time and time, oh, I never know such a thing. Oh, I didn't know you learned how to network. I didn't know. So I, had, I don't have a specific. Some people do it in a kind of like throw it in there but never have it exactly precisely as this is networking. It's never clear. They don't look, for example, when I say, truly, if I was to define this, I'll say we codified networking and made it into a science. For example, the definition of networking in the dictionary is incorrect. A vast familiarity with the subject. So I have to work out, one, the purpose of networking. Why do you network? Two, the definition of it three, the basic laws of networking, and four, the full-blown technology of it. It never existed before. I never want to put it out because it may come across like being megalomaniac. But now it is a science. As I say, you do one, two, three, you get the result. 
when we teach people in our program and send them out to practice it, if they ever come down and say it didn't work, we only ask one question. What did you do? Because we know they didn't do exactly precisely what we taught them. We have oh. 80 years of research, which makes us really turn it into a total, complete, exact, precise science. And that I haven't seen anywhere. So one thing I would recommend is just think about Mm -hmm. strategic partnerships with organizations like BNI, Nexco, mm -hmm. other groups where they are all about networking and that still people need to learn how to network. Right. And so whether Thank it's you. starting with joint webinars or marketing campaigns or something, mm -hmm. um, but that's a path I would recommend. I, I think also somebody brought up workspaces like Office Evolution, Intelligent Offices, all, all of these different groups mm -hmm. that need help networking. And that's literally why people go to them. Yes. I think we could be great collaborators, strategic partners. Maybe you have differential pricing for groups that onboard uh, large, large networks. Absolutely. I think that it's great to start with the segment, but I find the most powerful networking is with diverse groups. So I wouldn't necessarily yes. limit it to just mortgage lenders, even though I know what you're trying to do. I got it. Okay. Thank you very much, Mom. Of course. Glad to have you here. <laughs> yes, Ken. Um, of course, um, Jen has beat me to it um, because I was uh, I was thinking about the whether or not you you imagined BNI and NRG or MBX as potential competitors or potential collaborators. I think Jen was was suggesting uh, potential collaborators because they have. Um, the idea that they're teaching networking and they mm -hmm. are teaching networking in their way. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think they have your technology, your background, your mm -hmm. system. Um, so they may, so I was just curious as to how you saw those other uh, membership organizations that are in the networking space. Well, allow me to be candid. There are competitors, but there's no competition. Uh, I never look at myself if I, ha I had a, com uh, a competition in the arena. Absolutely, I I'm open to all ideas. I'll go and I tell you what I focus on mortgage, because what I'm looking for, or what is I'm very mostly interested in, is the guy who's going to pay five thousand dollars or fourteen thousand dollars. This is my target. Most other people, they may want a seminar, they may want a class, which is good, but the business cannot survive on a 997. So I'm looking for, when I'm talking, I'm looking for the guy who I know, a mortgage people are willing to pay $5,000, $15,000 for a program, long-term program. This is the guy I'm going on first. If somebody has come great, the door is wide open. And I have a networking organization, I bring them in, they network. And I mentioned the program, but I'm looking for the guys who want to pay $5,000 or $14,000. And that is the mortgage guy. And may, they may be here and there. I may get one or two guys outside of the mortgage arena as possible. But I'm focusing on the mortgage because they have no problem and they're willing to pay that kind of money. And they are my ideal client for that reason. But I'm willing to serve one another. Next, we've got Jen Dalton again. Zale, have you done any focus groups or beta testing with the Network Institute? Like, do you have a case study that says, here's what I've worked with, here's the impact on results? Because I, I find if you're going to go out and look for that big of a check, people definitely want to see some case studies or historical proof or be part of a beta program to help shape the Network Institute so it's the best it can possibly be. Absolutely. I'm open to do that. We have had people on those major programs, and I have a whole bunch of testimonials about it. And uh, yeah, we have those, but I haven't done it in the framework of uh, beta testing, but I, I, will, I will happily do that. I'm sure. open and I can learn, I'm sure. Because if you're looking at that price point, I'd be looking at groups like Accelerant or people who are organizations that are ready to get checks. Absolutely, um, yeah. Just a quick time check, Melinda. I know we need to stay on track. I see we have yep. John Morris with one more question. Right. 
um, before John, I've got one other comment on top of your comment. You may want to put together some packages where as a company that's a big company that's spending this kind of money be, may become a sponsor mm -hmm. so that you can then have them sponsoring some of the other networking events and other types of things. Mm -hmm. So you may also look for you know the small guy but if you have different types of packages together right. you can also bring in people that can teach some of the individual skills so it's not right. you all the time and packages may be a good way to have different revenue revenue streams with that john norse go ahead yeah two comments uh basil um there's that classic rule of business that price is what you pay value is what you get so the mm -hmm. price, I would never sell on price. I don't think you do, but uh, obviously you have to create that value proposition. Mm -hmm. And and I, you know, again, you're free to run your business how you do, but everyone has competition. There's 330 mm -hmm. million people in this country. There's someone mm -hmm. doing what you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. And I, obviously I could, I don't have to go to a specialist or a niche like you to learn networking right. or sales skills. I could pay, I don't even know who they are anymore, but there are sales organizations that I could learn selling skills or networking skills. Just, I don't know who they are because I've never looked at it, but mm -hmm. the point I'm making is, um, you know, Jen's point about broadening your scope. I mean, why would you shrink your pool of potential people if networking is something that's universal to quote all sales people say i don't you know i just think that you're limiting yourself if networking is a skill that may be adopted by one out of ten sales people why would you limit just to mortgage brokers or real estate agents why not insurance agents or you know it just you may want to look at broadening your because networking is you're saying it's a system that works your work works why wouldn't it work in all sales yeah, yeah if i may say a thing absolutely i came out of my mortgage through experience uh i joined as i mentioned the nvr i attend a lot of their events i joined uh, the insurance association i attended uh, some, some of their event it's just that as a result the people that came and signed up and paid me were loan officers you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just reading my numbers. I'm just seeing it. I went there. I've been in those organizations. Just that the, the one who came and got the check or on the card were mortgage. That's that's how I came to this. But I'm, as I said, I'm wide open, and I have different people on different field coming and taking my class. I'm wide open. It's just that this is the guy who say I need you. So that's what I I brought a uh, focus on mortgage. That's the reason. But I'm wide open. Are y'all two people? Y'all have like yeah. 10 seconds to ask your question. Well, I was just going to say that. We've got two people coming up. No problem. One is John and one is Scott. If you guys are quick. Let us roll. Last question. Okay. So I, I just to uh, focus more on what Bazil said, you know, uh, I think it's a very appropriate narrow strategy when you're going after corporate business to pick based on your own numbers an initial place because you can only be in so many places. So yes, networking applies in a lot of different industries. Mm -hmm. And there are certain obstacles even in the mortgage bankers world, but the notion of finding 50 business owners in the region who own um, lending companies, mortgage companies, and picking up five to 10 of them as corporate clients makes a lot of sense to me as opposed to a more shotgun approach, just mm -hmm. because the skill applies to many industries. Once we get a track record at the corporate level, not mm -hmm. in an open enrollment world, but in mm -hmm. private training to a corporate client, not 10 people in a room from five different companies. That's okay too. That's called open enrollment, but to get mm -hmm. corporate clients, um, I think it's for one person to undertake how many industries can you be in? That's the point. Yeah. And you also get to learn more about the industry so that you're more relevant when you're teaching them. I mean, I attend their event, I go to the seminar, so I'm on point real to them and I understand the issues they are up against. So yeah, that it's make it a help in that sense too. Just good discussion, guys. Okay, Your we need to wrap up. I'm going to pass it over to Jen Dalton right now, and I apologize 
to those. That and feel know. free to reach out to me, please, if you have a question. I, and John as well, who has it. So. Thank you, Ken, for, for being up, for reaching out to Pazil later. We appreciate that. Pazil, great job today. Thank you Thank for you. being your energetic self and bringing <laughs> fun, fun business to discuss. Networking is huge. And entrepreneurs all need, business owners all need, and business leaders all need it. Uh, so our, our last question for you is what else can we do to support you uh, as you go to move forward with the Network Institute? Well, I want to start with what I can do to support the organization. So I will be more regular. I have not been due to the wild, wild west of the life. And I've invited four people to sign up to do a presentation just like I did. Uh, yeah. You know now what I do if you know who I'm looking for. So if there's anybody that you know, and then stay open, you know, as I say, this is really for anybody. Find somebody that I say, well, I would like to improve my networking skills. Feel free to let me know. We can help them at, at any level. So I would very much appreciate that. Thank you so much, Basile. Thank you, Mom. All right. Next slide, Leslie. So next week's yeah. presenter, we do have a couple of people in the pipeline, uh, but it could be you. So if you have not presented or if you would like to come back and give an update, Please go to one million cups.com forward slash Fairfax and submit an application and we can work with you and, and coach you on preparing you. We do have a networking event coming up. I'm just confirming the logistics and all of that. So you'll hear about that later this week. Uh, and as I said, we do have a couple of applicants in the pipeline, but we do need to fill some up for February and March. Remember, this is free, uh, it's all volunteer led. So we're here really just to help businesses grow. Also, thank you for all the people who joined who are new today. Ken, thank you for joining me. Great to see you. Uh, and of course, uh, June as well. Uh, hopefully you can come back and maybe share your business. Next slide. Upcoming events. You know, the first thing I saw was chocolate and wine tasting. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> you can drop in chat if you have other events coming up. Um, if anybody wants to speak to some of these, uh, please do so in test. Are there any that you recommend and want to call out? Uh, of course, Chocolate Lovers Festival. <laughs> City yeah, of Fairfax is putting that. that on. It is returning. And the last one was in February 2020. So um, I have been told not to miss liquid chocolate this year, that it is going to be awesome. Fantastic. I hear it's good after a workout. I don't know. Just a thought. All right, next slide. Uh, if you do want to become an organizer, you know, the more the merrier, uh, many hands make life work. So you can always join, see what you think. If you want to be a brand ambassador, uh, that's also something that we're looking for. So thank you to our brand ambassadors on the call today. Thank you, Reggie and John Foster. We love having you as our brand ambassadors. Next slide. Do follow us on social. Um, please make sure you check in on LinkedIn. That's a great place to share our posts and, uh, and share invitations and spread awareness about what we're doing. And next slide. So thank you again. I'm going to put in chat the one million cups.com forward slash Fairfax. That is where you can apply. We need to make sure people apply there first, then we can help them get ready for their presentation. So again, I'll put that in chat. We would love to see you. Please take a minute and save the chat so you can have contact information from folks here. Uh, we'd love to make sure you continue to catch up and get to know each other outside of this meeting as well. All right, with that, I'm gonna stop our Facebook Live.